Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video of Arc for Noobs. I have to tell you guys, it feels so good to be able to come in here and do these videos for you guys again. I'm, I'm so stoked to get these duties every week. Um, so last week we went over some of like the, the initial resources that you're going to need through the game. It was very brief, it was very quick, just going through everything, um, kind of showing the basics. Um, now these next couple of weeks we're going to go a little bit more in depth and today specifically we're going to be starting with the mortar and pestle so without further ado let's get into the video. I got him! Yes. Alright guys, here we are in my base again. Um, so like I said, we are going to go into the Mortar and Pestle here. I'm going to go over the four main um, building items that you're going to use pretty much right off the bat um, when you start into Arc. And so those are going to be uh, Spark Powder here, which leads you to Gunpowder, a little bit of Narcotic, and some Cementing Paste. So let's start with the, the easiest of those, which is going to be your Spark Powder. Um, Spark powder is really like kind of how we talked about it last week. You're going to be using it not only in the preserving bins to keep your, your items cold, but it also leads you to gunpowder. Um, so like you, as you can see here, you need two flint for every one stone to make one spark powder. So let's go get some of that. Um, we already have a bunch of stone in there, so we're really just going to work about getting the flint today. Um, Flint is easily taken from any rock that you can harvest. So not the rocks on the ground, uh, but any rock that you can harvest. And you are going to want to use your pick. So pick, when you're hitting rocks, is going to give you majority flint. Um, and it's also going to help you get metal, which is increasingly important the, the deeper you get into this game. Um, but right off the bat, getting metal from any rocks is crucially important. Because um, you are going to want to get to those metal items, metal pickaxes, metal metal anything, as quickly as you can to start progressing yourself through this game. Um, so as you can see, as soon as I put that flint in there, I was able to make this. So we're just going to make it all. Um, we're going to just, you know, make as much as we can. So we had 50, so we are able to make about 25 more. Um, so as you can see, too... What's really cool about spark powder is for every one you're making, it's actually making two here. Um, we are on my private island. Uh, the only thing that's not base game-wise here is uh, I have a mod on to give it more dinosaurs, which we'll go over in later videos. Um, and I'll kind of show you guys how to go through about, about that. Um, so now that we have our spark powder, um, let's show a little bit of gunpowder. So gunpowder is going to take spark powder and charcoal. Um, charcoal, sorry. Uh, to get charcoal, you're going to need wood. Not thatch, but actual pieces of wood. Uh, and as most of you guys already know, you're going to use a hatchet to get wood uh, more than thatch, uh, as it's going to chop it up into pieces of wood. Uh, whereas your pickaxe is going to actually splinter the wood and cause it to give you the thatch. Um, the reason the thatch isn't going to give you charcoal, um, as you kind of come in here, you're going to see we have to burn it. So as you're burning wood, it's going to actually condense down into what we call charcoal. If you burn thatch, thatch is so many little pieces of wood that it just burns up and essentially disintegrates into the air. It still can be used to heat items, it still can be used as a light source, all of the above, but you won't actually get any of the charcoal resource out of it. Um, but as you can see with wood, so when you start the fire, it is gonna take one wood away, it is gonna take one fuel away, whatever you're gonna do. But then for every one wood that burns, you are gonna get one charcoal resource. So now we have a couple, um, let's come over here. We're going to throw this in here. We already had some in here from uh, previous gameplay. Um, but now that we have charcoal and spark powder together, 
you're going to be able to make your gunpowder, which takes one charcoal, um, one spark powder for every one gunpowder. So let's craft all that. And as you can see, we made 50. Um, gunpowder is going to be a one to one ratio. So for every one you make, you are going to receive one, one gunpowder out of it. All right, um, let's move on to narcotic here. Uh, so I have dinosaurs out here that are very good at getting us narco berry. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to do it by hand. Um, so you're really going to want to come to any, any of the bushes that you can find starting. Um, you can get a lot of narco berry if you're in the swamp area, which we'll go into a little bit later. And I can show you guys those bushes that'll give you a little bit more narco berry than, than a, your standard island bush will give you. Um, but for, for new starting players, really, whatever bush you can find will be okay. Um, you're not going to get a ton, but you will get enough to sustain yourself for a little bit, at least until you can get to dinosaurs, which will give you... Which will give you a lot. They'll, they'll harvest a lot. Um, so just in that little bit, I got 11, which is going to be great for right now. Um, as you can see, we do have a farm out here, actually. So we have a farm of narco berry, uh, and we have crops and everything like that going on here, um, which I'll go over a farming tutorial in another video a little bit later on, um, which will actually be really fun. I've never done a farming tutorial before. Um, but as you can see, I put this in here. Uh, narcotic takes not only narco berry, but also spoiled meat. Spoiled meat, you're going to get it no matter what, um, just as you're playing. As you can see, all meat has a spoil time. If you throw it into something like a preserving bin or a fridge, um, it is going to make it last a little bit longer than if you were to just have it in your inventory. Um, so this being almost spoiled, I'm going to show you guys a cool trick. Uh, because later on down the game, you are going to get to a point where you have an abundance of narco berry and you don't have enough spoiled meat. So if you ever run into that issue and you have a stack like this that's almost there, put it into your inventory and then keep splitting it by one. You can go as far as you can before it spoils or if you can get it completely done. Um, that's amazing. All I'm doing here is I'm right clicking on the item and going down to split stack and then split one. What this is gonna allow us to do is now that they're all split into their own stacks, they're all gonna spoil. It's not just gonna be one spoiling off the top of the stack, um, which is really, it's, it's super helpful for when you come to that time where it's like, oh man, I have 7,000 narco berry and I don't have any spoiled meat. So as you can see, all of those spoiled at the same time and they added to what I already had. I think I had one in there. Um, oh, your boy's a little thirsty. Let's go grab some water real quick. Um, but just like that, I was able to make nearly a full stack of spoiled meat that I can now throw in the mortar and pestle and use the narco berry. Obviously, we didn't grab a ton, but for the sake of showing you guys how it works, uh, I just wanted to show that little option there. Um, now, the last thing, cementing paste. Cementing paste is probably the most important thing you will ever get in this game. Um, I'm not saying that jokingly. I'm not saying that as, oh, for new players, it's going to be that way. No, for literally every player, you have to have cementing paste up until you're literally at tech items. You've already beaten bosses. You've done all the stuff that is crazy hard to do. You have to have cementing paste to do it. Um, and I'll show you why. So if we come over here to the fabricator, uh, polymer is the main resource that you're going to use in the fabricator. For every one polymer, you're going to need two obsidian, which we'll go over how to get that later, um, and two cementing paste. But if you're trying to even just get like the, a uh, the AR, the assault rifle, you need 50 cementing paste on top of 60 polymer. That 60 polymer is going to take 120 cementing paste to make, and then you need 50 more on top of that. As you can see, it, it stacks up pretty quickly and if you're ever getting to something like an industrial forge i mean you need 400 polymer and 600 cementing paste on top of it that is a total of 1400 cementing paste just to make one thing so as you can see it's it's a pretty important resource for you guys to have here um, and as you can see it takes four chitin or keratin 
and eight stone. So chitin and keratin comes off of armored dinosaurs. So whether that be an ankylosaurus, whether that be a trilobite, um, anything like that is going to give you chitin or keratin. The best way that I have found to get it um, is either going to caves or to swamps. So without further ado, we're going to head over to one of the swamps and I will show you guys how to get some chitin. All right, guys, here we are in this swamp. Um, this is the swamp that's closest to that south region three where where most of you guys are going to spawn off the bat. Uh, really, any any swamp will work for this method, though. And the, the method that we're going to use today is um, killing a creature and leaving it for the ants. So ants are really high in chitin for some reason, like their chitin drop rate. Um, is just way up there compared to majority of the other creatures um, other than trilobites but the best thing about ants is they are way more common than trilobites so the possibility or the probability of finding them and finding them on a consistent basis is is way higher than trilobites um, leading us to want to try and find ants uh, more often um, so the best way to go about this is you can either just kill something right off the bat and try and let the ants come to it, or you can try and find some ants, um, and then kill something around them and let them all come to it. Man, I am a dehydrated boy today. Um, let's see around here. There's gotta be ants. There's gotta be some ants around here, right, Chad? And we will go into like what creatures are, are big and bad in the swamp um, in some of our later videos. But for right now, um, we're just going to kind of run through it. Uh, there's got to be some ants around here somewhere. There they are. Okay. So ants or uh, dragonflies is another thing you can call them. So I already killed something. And the best thing about killing something small like this guy is I can drag his body. So we're going to honestly bring him over into a pretty safe area. You don't want to be around too many um, carnivores or too many threats to you, honestly, because uh, they will come, they'll, they'll eat the meat, they, they will do everything that you don't want to happen. <laughs> they'll try to eat you, they'll eat what you're using as, like, baits, they'll do whatever they have to do, man. Um, so, they were right around here, so like I said, I'm gonna drop it, this one's gonna come right at me, these ones are all gonna come right at me right now, which is honestly what we wanted. We're gonna kill those four and just like that so usually you can let them get stacked up on on whatever you you killed um those guys since they saw me dragging the item they didn't quite let me get to that point uh where'd the other body go i know it's right around here somewhere oh it's up here so uh, the best way to get chitin too is to use your hatchet. You don't want to use the pickaxe. Pickaxe is going to give you the meat off of him. Um, if you use the hatchet, you are going to get chitin. See, like I got 25 off of that one guy. Um, majority of the time, you're not going to get all that much off of them. Like you saw the other two um, added up to 27. Man, I need to upgrade my water a little bit. <laughs> um, but you are going to get you're going to get more off of them. And there's tricks that you can do to get more using dinosaurs and stuff like that, which we'll go over um, in later on videos. But for right now, majority of you guys, majority of what I want the audience to look at is how to get things by hand. Ooh, it's plant species, plant species X right there. That'll be good. Cool. That'll be a cool farming video. Once we get to that, showing you guys how to set up base defenses. Um, but for right now, uh, I am going to head back to the base and I will see you guys when I get back. All right, we have made it back here to the base. Um, 
I'm going to bring our chitin right over here to the mortar and pestle. Um, and like I said, it does take four chitin and eight stone, so we're going to craft as much as we can. And this is a one-to-one -one ratio as well, which is kind of brutal. Because um, you are going to make one cementing paste per every one you're actually producing. Um, the only other ways to do that is, like I was saying, uh, using using dinos. So if you use frog and you take out those same bugs, or you take out anything that, that gives you chitin, it'll actually collect cementing paste off of those dead creatures, as, as well as collecting chitin from them. Um, another one that I didn't really want to get into in this video, but I'll at least bring up, is there are beaver dams that you will find. They're giant, giant beavers and giant beaver dams. They hold like two to four hundred cementing paste, depending on which ones you find. Uh, the only danger about those is the beavers are exceedingly aggressive. As soon as you touch anything that's been in their dam, they will be coming after you. Um, they will be attacking you. If you don't have anything set up to defend yourself, it is going to hurt. Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much what I wanted to go over uh, in the video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you guys haven't watched the last video I did about all of the main resources, there is going to be a link right now that should be popping up. Um, like I said, I am super happy and super glad that I'm able to do these videos for you guys again. I am so excited to keep going and keep progressing. Um, stay tuned for the video coming out next week. Other than that, stay good, stay arcing, guys. Peace out.